December of 2013, two men, Robert Stewart and Darren Hughes, were about to undergo a kidney transplant surgery at the University Hospital of Wales. It was a moment of bittersweet hope because they were receiving the gift of life from a man known only as Mr. Z, who had tragically lost his life in a car accident on that very same day. The surgeries were successful for only a short while. Within two weeks, both Stewart and Hughes were dead. The cause of their untimely death sent shockwaves throughout the medical community as an autopsy revealed the chilling truth. Both men had succumbed to meningitis, a bacterial infection that attacks the brain. The investigation took a puzzling twist as the source of the complications was traced back to the kidneys they had received from Mr. Z. Mr. Z was not the car accident victims that the doctors said he was. Instead, he was a homeless alcoholic who had endured a life of hardship and suffering. Mr. Z's kidneys harbored a very rare parasitic worm. So rare, in fact, that up until that point, there's only been four recorded cases in all of written literature, and it was the worms that had caused the meningitis in all three cases. To make the odds of winning the Devil's Lottery even more unlikely, it was revealed that Mr. Z's kidneys had been rejected by more than six other hospitals in Scotland and England before finding their way to the UHW. The gravity of the situation was obvious. The doctors failed to ensure the safety of their patients in a very neglectful manner. February of 1995, Willie King had suffered from diabetes for 20 years and had no choice but to go into surgery and have the disease-ridden foot removed. The paperwork was done, the blackboard in the operating room was prepped, the nurse began finishing her preparations, and the surgery began. Everything was going as planned, but during the operation, the nurse runs into the operating room in tears and informs the doctor operating he was removing the wrong foot. The doctor had not checked with the nurse or paperwork before the surgery, and unfortunately the doctor's was so far in the operation, it was too late to stop. For the next two weeks, the doctors did everything that they could to save the other foot, but eventually they had to remove that one too. The hospital paid King a $900,000 settlement, and the doctor who operated gave King a quarter million dollars out of his own pocket. In January of 2012, Belma Nayar found herself in a nightmare situation at the Oakwood Hospital in Dearborn, Michigan. She was rushed into surgery for what doctors believed was a brain bleed, drilling five holes into her skull and removing a portion of her right cranial bone. Shockingly, no evidence of a brain bleed was found during that procedure. After the surgery, an inexplicable mix-up in the medical records was discovered as she was not there for brain surgery. She just needed a jaw realignment procedure to treat her bilateral jaw displacement. The hospital remained tight-lipped about the details of the grave mistake they made, only hinting it was a radiology mix-up. Tragically, Bilma's health took a devastating turn and she passed away just two months later. Her family, understandably devastated, took the matters to court. In the end, the family won a $21 million settlement, but some sources online told me they never saw a dime. On the 29th of January in 2001, Reverend Arturo Idoralde was admitted to the Hilo Hospital in Hawaii to receive back surgery for his lower back pains. The surgeon, Dr. Rickardson, was to implant a titanium rod in his spine. However, the doctor seemed to have misplaced the rod, so he did what he considered to be the next best thing. The doctor used a hacksaw to cut off the handle of a stainless steel screwdriver and use that in place of the stronger titanium rod. The doctor thought he was so clever he wouldn't have to tell anyone about his screwy hack job At least not until three days later when the screwdriver snapped in half. Now, what Arturo did not know about Dr. Rickardson before his surgery, Hack Adams over here already had seven malpractice suits against him and his license both revoked and suspended in two other states. After three corrective surgeries, Arturo became a paraplegic and ended up passing away just two years later. Now, before I get to the last story, this is a really tough business to break into, so please consider subscribing. Turn on all of the notifications so you know when I upload. And also, the more likes I get, the more YouTube will push this video out to more people. Also, if you're feeling ill, go to the doctor. Don't let this video actually detract you. Yes, mistakes happen all the time. But severe cases like this are usually pretty rare, and when they do happen, they're usually heavily covered by media. Now, I'm giving you a final warning before we get into this last story. 
If you have any younglings watching this, send them to bed now. The story's so bad, I'm just gonna spoil it with a title card so you know if you need to get out. This isn't one of the worst medical stories I've ever heard. This is one of the worst stories in general I've ever heard. You have been warned. Giving birth to a child should be one of the most beautiful moments in anyone's given life. But tragically, that wasn't the case for Trevon Taylor and Jessica Ross. The research for this story was gathered from the perspective of the lawyers and the defendants of the case. And until it is all said and done in court, everything that follows here is alleged. July 10th of 2023 at Southern Regional Medical Center in Georgia, Jessica began delivery of her child. However, complications arose during delivery as a baby became lodged in the birth canal in a case known as shoulder dystocia, something that occurs when the baby's head gets stuck behind the mother's pubic bone. Even though the couple had asked for a C-section three hours earlier, the doctors spent that precious time applying traction to the baby's head. While the doctors were attempting to free the child from the birth canal, so much force was applied that the spine completely severed. A C-section was finally performed, however, when the body was finally pulled out, the baby's head was still delivered vaginally. According to the couple's lawyer, when they wrapped the baby up tightly, they propped the baby's head on top of the blanket to make it appear like the head was attached when it wasn't. This story goes far deeper lawfully, but that's not what this video is about. So I'm going to be dropping some links in the description to take you to a better article so you can get a better understanding of what happened. It was kind of difficult for me to piece together. I know that last story was kind of short, but I just didn't really want to talk about it anymore. One thing that I will tell you right now is some articles I read online, the case was ruled a homicide. I am a natural. I'll see you in the next one.